it's Tommy here and welcome back to a brand new Liverpool Career Roadshow episode and this is a huge one. First we will play of course two Premier League games and a Chelsea League Cup semi-final. The VRR game is a little bit further away so sorry about that. So we are playing the semi-final second leg against Chelsea. We are one it up so that will be huge but also this Brentford game is massive because the teams around us play each other. Tottenham play Arsenal, Man City play Chelsea and then in the next round Chelsea play Tottenham so a lot of the big teams could drop points but you know how hard the FIFA 22 gameplay is and I really enjoy this career mode because of that and of course if you enjoy this series leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and also shout out to these guys that you can see below me comment of the day goes out to you guys and we get a loan offer for our newly signed player Santiago Naveda he's only 70 rated so I don't think he will get much game time so let's try and loan him out to Wolfsburg and then he will develop there and basically grow and I will treat him like a youth player so when he is good enough he will be recalled from his loan and then he can start or at least be a substitute every week but at 70 rated I don't think uh, he can play a lot and you know I don't want to stunt his growth so let's hope, let's hope Wolfsburg take him and we have a youth player Viktor Turek who is from Hungary and I think he is better suited to be a striker so let's change his position and yes his rating went up by one which is not a lot but at least now he is a little bit better than before he has 59 finishing at just 16 years old that's very promising but we need to improve his short passing of course and we will play when Brentford Ivan Tony is their danger man and I'm playing my strongest possible lineup because this is a very important part of the season let's get points on the board and let's hope that the top teams beat each other welcome to Anfield this is a very exciting game as I said the top teams play each other on this weekend so that's always important to get the three points Fabinho are you kidding me, Vissa? Woo! He hits the bar! Fabinho, and that is a lovely ball to Robertson. Keita. Origi! Origi is it, surely! Divock Origi! What a through ball! Absolutely brilliant play! And Bobby Firmino has, deserves all the credit. What a through ball! And Divo Corrigi, honestly, I, I ran out of words what to say about this guy. He is just a cheat code in this career ball that I never knew until I tried him on FIFA 22 that he's this good. Honestly, he's scoring goals for fun. If he sco keeps scoring at this rate, uh, Divo Corrigi could end up as the top scorer in the Premier League. Eight goals in just three. 13 matches, that is a remarkable return. Come on, win that header. Van Dijk! Yes, Alisson, that was a big save, but now Brentford are trying with the corner. Go on. Go on, Jota! Oh! Jota was almost in. What is that header, Robertson? Oh my goodness gracious me! Yes, Gomez! Salah. Please, Salah. Surely. Salah. Salah is in! Salah! No! Oh, I should have finished this. Oh my goodness gracious me. Oh my word, that should have been 2-0 Liverpool and this could have been game over. So the second half of the Brentford game went missing, the footage got corrupted, so sorry about that. The game finished 1-0, so there were no more goals in the second half. I really need to work on my finishing, man. How did I only score one goal against this really poor Brentford side? At least on FIFA they are pretty poor. Tottenham Arsenal ended up in a 1-1 draw, which is a very good result for us because now we pulled away from them a little bit and at least our top four place looks um, like uh, much more likely right now and thankfully Nabi Keita is only out injured for five days that's lucky for us so he will be back after the next game and of course we have a transfer offer for Divo Corrigi but I'm not selling this guy he has uh, nine goals I think or eight goals in 13 matches and they, they offer me Trossard. Trossard is a good player, but Origi is one of our best players this season, so I will reject this offer, even though it's pretty decent for Origi, but, but Trossard is 27, 
and uh, he's not a striker. We need a striker if we sell Origi, but I don't, I don't want to sell Origi anytime soon. I mean. And Naveda, the Mexican young talent, has been loaned out to Wolfsburg for two years. And now our next game is against Crystal Palace, who are in the relegation zone, and we have to rotate the team a little bit because some of the players are tired, so the whole back four gets rotated. But this is still a very, very good back line, and this is why I signed Sanchez. He is good enough to be a backup for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Mane also comes in, Jota hasn't been scoring lately, so let's give a run out to Mane and Jude Bellingham starts as well. Welcome to Salhurst Park! This is a very, very big game as well because uh, some of the top teams like Chelsea and Tottenham play each other and we need to beat teams who are around the relegation zone. It's as simple as that and I love it that the players are coming out at the same spot of the ground that they come out in real life. That's a really nice touch by EA. Oh, brilliant. Go on, Salah. Salah is offside. Why didn't I pass earlier? Oh, Mo Salah scores a good goal, but it's offside. I try, I'm trying everything, I'm trying everything, but Zaha still gets a shot away. Thankfully, Alisson saves it. He's equal to it. Come on, win that. Oh, Alisson again! Oh my goodness, I just... How is that not offside? Alvarez! Alisson! Woo! Mitchell gets it back. Eze! Oh, Alisson! Eze! Don't foul him! Oh, what just happened? Come on, come on, win that. But we him on Jude Bellingham, good shot. Salah, please, Mo Salah! And Origi! Oh, it's offside. Oh, come on, I thought... Nice one, EA. Yeah, nice one. Well done. You can't see anything. Fantastic camera work. Top star. Honestly, five star for you, EA. Are you kidding me? How did he head the ball from there on goal? I was right there with Sanchez and Sanchez completely misses the ball and Zaha's header is maybe going in so Alisson has to make a save. We need to f get fresh legs on the pitch. Jota, Thiago and Neko Williams are all coming on. Bellingham. Timikas. And Jota! Salah, what the hell is that pass? Shota, I can't believe it! Salah would have scored! And that will be a goal, just watch. Oh, jeez! Zaha missed an absolute sitter! Oh, we got very, very lucky. Thiago. And Fio! Jota is offside, oh, but they, he, even the goalkeeper saved that as well. Go on Jota. Jota has to score! Yes! Diogo Jota! Our top scorer in the Premier League comes on as a substitute and scores. And that is one of the most important goals of the whole season because I'm not gonna lie, Crystal Palace have been slightly the better team, I think they had more chances, but that one through ball by I think Bobby Firmino, he tees up Origi in the previous game and he tees up Diogo Jota in this one and Butland this time can't save. And that's now 12 goals for Diogo Jota in 21 games, he's our top scorer and now oh boy did we need that. Oh my god, I, I'm done. I'm done. I honestly, what on earth? How does Mateta score a header from like 15 yards? Alisson should absolutely save it. Uh, oh, look at this. That's on the line. And Alisson, oh my word. Honestly, how does this happen? Look at where Mateta is. He's right on the edge of the uh, box and somehow he heads it in still. Alisson, a 90 graded goalkeeper, can't save a header from 16 and 17 yards out. Absolutely ridiculous. And of course, Mateta's first goal. You know it, that's, that's career mode for you guys. 
You know how EA is. I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I'm just so salty. So a draw is a fair result because we haven't been better than Crystal Palace to be perfectly honest. But I'm sorry I got so salty because, you know, I was 1-0 up and I thought, wow, this could be another big win in our season and I mean we just need to finish more of our chances. We had 1.1 expected goals, Chris Pulse had 4.3 so I can't really complain. Playing my second team a little bit I regret that to be honest because we only had 3 shots on target, Chris Pulse had 9. How does a team in 19th place have 9 shots on target against me? That's absolutely ridiculous and I think uh, Firmino again had a good game but I probably think uh, who was the man of the match? Oh of course it was Alisson who was the man of the match and to be fair he made a lot of great saves. Luckily for us, uh, Chelsea beat Tottenham and Arsenal couldn't beat Burnley, which is, as I said, lucky for us because we are now still in the top four, but these are the kind of results which I think will prevent us from winning the league title. We just can't put three wins in a row on the board. I think we beat Chelsea and Brentford 1-0 in both games and then couldn't beat Crystal Palace even though we were 1-0 up with like 6-7 minutes to go. At least it looks like uh, our Champions League place will be in our hands but I think we need to beat Arsenal when we play them. And oh wow, Man United lost to West Ham as well at home so Man United couldn't extend their lead at the top of the table, in fact Man City got closer to them. Norwich, Crystal Palace and Brighton are in the relegation zone, I can't believe I can't, couldn't beat Crystal Palace. And now it's time for the League Cup semi-final second leg, we need to get a draw or a win away at Chelsea and then we are through. And oh my word, I'm really looking forward to this guys, come on. And Chelsea have a very very strong team even though they are rotating uh, some players, uh, Chaloba is their weakness at the back and centre backs are actually pretty tired. We play our best team because I want to get to the League Cup final, let's go! Welcome to Stamford Bridge, this is a really really big game in our season let's hope we can beat Chelsea and get to our first cup final of the whole series really excited about this Chaloba to Gaia to Saul good block oh that was a big save Alisson goodness everybody is back defending for us wow that was a really smart come on oh wow just Lukaku is just unplayable Go on, Bobby Firmino! Back Kappa saves it, unlucky. Come on! No! Alisson and I, I see a counter attacking opportunity. Oh my goodness, Salah! You have to be faster than Chaloba! Go on! Mo Salah! Please! Kappa saves it. How? Please. Robertson! Kappa again. Jota, Nabi Keita. he has a free shot! Oh, Kepa again! No. No, please! Kaya Wurtz to Werner and Alisson! Oh my goodness! Oh, I love how fast Doku is. Femino to Mane. Mane, good, that's good. A corner, I will take it, no worries. He passes it to James, oh, he passes it back to Gareth Bale. And Alisson, oh, what a big, big save that was by Alisson. Yes, guys, we are through to our first cup final in the FIFA 22 Liverpool career road. I love that. Uh, why doesn't, isn't Thomas Tuchel in the FIFA, by the way? He's a Champions League winner, and I think just... Chelsea were slightly the better team. We had a spell in the second, in the first half, at the end of the first half, where we had a lot of shots. The second half, I just couldn't really penetrate the Chelsea defense. But, you know, it was an even game. So I think the draw is a fair result. And in the first leg, I think we were slightly better. So it's a, it's a tight game and I will take it. We go through keeping two clean sheets against Chelsea. is absolutely massive. Alisson has been keeping clean sheets. He gets a 10.0 match rating. I mean, he made six 
saves on this one. Oh wow, it was a 5 all aggregate uh, tie between Arsenal and West Ham and Arsenal won on penalties. It's a shame we didn't get West Ham, but West Ham knocked us out of the FA Cup, so I'm not to bother that we will play Arsenal and Arsenal and Liverpool both um, need a trophy especially us that this is our first season in the Liverpool career mode and if I win a trophy even if that's a league cup I will take it take a look at this guys Man United dropped points so with a victory against Leicester we could get to three points behind the league leaders Manchester United so the title race is actually a five horse title race Arsenal won at Wolves, uh, so that is a big, big result for them. And I think that now Arsenal is ahead of us. We have to beat Leicester City. And we get a loan deal for Billy Kumatio finally from the smaller Paris Saint Germain, from the smaller club from Paris. And it's a loan to buy offer, which of course I don't want to loan, I won't want them to buy uh, Kumatio at the end of his loan spell. So let's do a two year loan. Let's hope they accept it. Let's hope Billy Kumatio accepts it. This guy has great potential and it's vital that we loan him out because. I can't really guarantee him playing time, being 59 rated in the Premier League and in the Champions League, it's almost impossible for him to play. Finally we get a loan offer for our very talented Brazilian backup goalkeeper Pitaluga, he's not even a backup goalkeeper, he's just a young player with like very bad rating right now, but he has also pretty decent potential, so I want to loan him out, and this loan deal doesn't have an option to buy, and I think it's a club from South America, so I will accept this deal, and Billy Cometio's two-year loan has been accepted by PSG, Paris FC, now we are waiting for Cometio and Pitaluga to accept the loans. Yes, Billy Cometio has agreed a two-year loan to Paris FC, it's very important, so he can develop, grow his rating and hopefully he will be a much better player than when he comes back. And Peter Luga has accepted the loan deal as well, that's fantastic news. So he goes out on a two year loan to Platense who is a club I think from South America. And Arsenal sold Pierre Meg Aubameyang, but they signed Di Nano, who is a great Argentinian striker from the Mexican league. I know him because I used him in career mode before when I was playing a South American Argentinian career mode. And they also sold Martinelli, which I'm pretty surprised with. Otavio is also a pretty decent player from Porto. So Arsenal actually uh, made some good signings, but they also lost Aubameyang, their best striker. But Di Nano is also a really good striker, I think. Chelsea didn't really sign anyone, Morato is, he can't be a good, a great player because he only cost uh, 3 million. Everton also lost uh, Toshun and Gomez, uh, so they got a little bit weaker I think. But Leicester City did a lot of business, they sold Madison but they signed 3 players for a similar price, Lozano, Coates and Cowell. And Man City sold Mandy and Stones and being Mandy being in jail, <laughs> probably it's right that they, they sell him, I'm not sure who takes him on. And Madison went to Manchester United, so that's a good, good transfer for Man United. I'm not sure they needed an attacking midfielder though. Tottenham only signed Berchiche, he's not a world class player, so yeah, that's a decent transfer for them. And the youth academy player that I'm most excited about is Arpad Fekete, who is a Hungarian player. He's only 15 years old, but already he has 62 finishing. Of course he needs to improve his passing and a little bit his dribbling, being a 50 passing, 61 dribbling, but all his other stats are pretty amazing and he's already a very fast player. So this could be one of our star players in the future. And Arsenal, after transfer deadline they has finished, come in with an offer to loan Minamino with an option to buy him. But to be honest, I don't really want to sell Minamino right now. Maybe in the summer I will think about it. But at 27, I don't think a loan is a, is a good option. Let me know guys, do you think I should, I should uh, sell Minamino at the end of the season? I think he's a decent squad player, but Origi is, um, is at the moment doing so so much better than Minamino. So I think I will give Minamino another half a season to prove himself and if I move him on it's going to be a sale, not a loan with an option to buy and definitely not to a, a, one of our rivals, Arsenal, I don't want to make them any stronger.